To get you quickly in tune with designing your own sound effects, I want to start off by talking about the sound cue editor. So let's open up the content browser, and what I want you to do is to find any blank space here in the middle of the browser, right click, and choose new sound cue. Now we have this, we had to give this a name, so let's put this in a package that we'll call sound demo. Group will be sound cues, and then for the name, let's just choose. Well, let's call this one random number, and you'll see why as we go along. Now we'll click OK, and we get a couple of things. One, the sound cue editor will appear in the background with a blank sound cue, and we can actually see the sound cue here in the content browser. Your next move when you do this should be to save your package. So I'm going to click on the sound demo package and hit Control S, click Save, and there we go. Now, back over here in the sound cue editor. As I mentioned earlier, this is a visual interface that allows you to put together various nodes to control how your sound is playing back. However, right now we don't have any sounds to play. So I'm going to jump back over to the content browser, and over here underneath the object type, make sure that all types are visible, and I'm going to grab sound wave data. Now let's make sure we're searching through all assets, and I want you to search for the word countdown. Now this is the announcer and the various countdowns from 10 to 1 uh, toward the end of a match. So you have things like 10, 6, 1. So all sorts of different numbers, all the way from 1 to 10. Now I'm going to grab all of these at the same time. Just hold down Shift and go from the first one to the last one so we have all of them. Now I'm going to put the content browser away, and I'm going to right-click over here inside the sound cue editor. And we can do this manually or automatically. And here's the automatic way. We can just choose random and click and check it out. It automatically brought all 10 of our sound effects in and connected them up to a random node. But that's almost like cheating, isn't it? So let's take that out. And we'll build it manually just so you can see how it works. So I'm going to right click again and we have sound node wave and all you see is countdown zero one but since everybody's selected it'll bring all 10 of them in at the same time. And I'll go ahead and maximize this view just to make it a little easier to see. Now navigating the sound cue editor is very much like navigating many of these other visual editors that you'll find throughout UDK. If you drag with the left mouse button, you're panning the view. Right mouse will pan as well, and left and right together will zoom in and out. So we have all 10 of our sound effects. Let's go ahead and set them up through a random node, just like we saw a second ago. This is as easy as right-clicking and choosing the type of node that you want. Now there's not that many nodes to choose from, but you still have a lot of flexibility in how you string them together. Just as a quick overview, we have attenuation. This allows us to attenuate sound, meaning it falls off as we move away from it, as well as to spatialize it in 3D space to actually position that sound somewhere. We have a concatenator, which allows us to string sounds together. So if we wanted to, we could use a concatenator instead of a random, and instead of getting a random number, we would actually be stringing all the numbers together. And we'll take a look at that here in just a moment. We can use a delay, which, as the name suggests, will just kind of insert a pause from one sound to the next. A distance crossfade will allow you to fade from one sound effect to another, based on your distance from the actual sound's location. So as you get further away, you can shift from one sound to the next, which is kind of an interesting effect if you, uh, if you get down and play with it. Next we have looping. This will make a sound just continue to play back either indefinitely or a set number of times. Now, sound node mature is kind of a specific thing. Basically, this is a way you can flag a sound effect so that uh, the system knows it's mature. And if the player has the mature settings off so they don't want to hear things like profanity, then uh, that type of sound effect will be flagged off. A mixer is very much like the actual mixer piece of audio equipment. It allows you to plug in multiple inputs and control how much volume is going to come out of each one of those inputs. A modulator allows you to edit an incoming sound by modulating its pitch up and down to make it higher or lower, as well as modulating its volume up and down. And you have random values that you can play with, so each time the sound is called, you can get a random value within a range, which is very nice. You also have a continuous modulator, where the modulator is only going to change the pitch or volume of a sound just the moment it's played. A continuous modulator will change the pitch and volume over time, so your pitch can start off low and go high across the uh, realm of playback. 
Down from here, we have an oscillator. This allows you to control the pitch and volume based on a sine wave. And so you can control the various settings of the sound wave to, I'm sorry, the sine wave to make your volume go up and down, make your pitch go up and down and so forth. A random node is what we're going to be using in a second. This allows you to just randomly select one of the incoming inputs. And a sound node wave param can be accessed uh, externally via uh, Kismet or Matinee. Now, let's start off just by using a random. Now, by default, a random is going to come in with only two inputs, and we have ten things to hook up. So instead of having to string together a bunch of randoms, what we're going to do instead is right-click and choose Add Input. And we can do this a total of eight more times, or seven more times. So there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And now it'd just be a matter of wiring these all together. So we'll take just a second and do that. Now, obviously, what's going to happen here is whenever we make a call to this random node, it's going to grab one of these sound effects and give us a number. So let's see what this sounds like. If we get everybody connected up, and here's our last one, pink. All we have to do is connect this final node to our little outgoing speaker, and now we can hit play. And we want to make sure we're clicking the play sound cue. There's only three buttons up here in the toolbar. There's stop, if you just want to stop the playback. There's play a selected node. So if I grab, say, countdown five and click the play selected node button, what we get is... Five. But if we grab play sound cue, we're actually going to grab everything. Seven, five, eight, three, four. And each time we click, we're getting a random number. So you can see how that works. Now, if we swap this out for, say, a concatenator, and we can add just as many inputs here as well, so there's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, the order in which we plug these up will be important, so I'm actually going to start at 10, and they're going to kind of crisscross over each other. There's 9, 8, 7, 6. I should put them out of order just because it would be kind of funny. Like, the announcer can't count. Make your count to five with one, two, five. All right, and then let's plug this into the speaker, and now listen to what we get. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So we've just taken all of those sound effects, and we're just playing them back to back through concatenation. So it's pretty easy to see how all this works. Now, what I'm going to do real quick is delete all these nodes and go back to that nice automatic way of just choosing a random at the outset. And everybody's all connected together for us. And let's talk about a few of these other nodes that you're going to be using commonly. If we were to just plug this in and save this out as a sound cue, this sound would kind of sound like it's coming from everywhere. Uh, it wouldn't have any sort of attenuation. It wouldn't be located in any given position. you just hear it coming straight through your headphones with no stereo effect whatsoever. If we were to add an attenuation, we solve that problem, if you thought it was a problem. An attenuation node gives us the ability to choose whether or not the, uh, uh, the volume itself is going to be attenuated based on distance, which means the closer we get, the louder it gets, or the further away, the fainter. And we can also spatialize so that we can get 3D audio. So if you have like a full surround sound system, you can hear the sound actually going from one speaker to the next and so on and so forth. Now, there are a few different algorithms you can choose. You know, is there linear fall off, logarithmic fall off? Really, it's just a way to control the math of how quickly you go from full audio to no audio. And you have the sound distance as well. So you can have normal distance, which puts your, uh, your sound effect in a single point in space. Or you could say that that sound is coming from an infinite plane in any two of the axes. Now down from here, you have radius min and radius max. The way these work is radius min is the area within which you have full volume. Radius max is the area without which you have no volume. And in between radius min and radius max, you get a fall off, which is determined by your distance algorithm. I hope that made sense. Really, in a nutshell, you can uh, visualize this just with two spheres, one inside the other. If you're inside the innermost sphere, you, you hear everything at full volume. As you pass through the first sphere on your way out to the surface of the second one, your volume will get fainter and fainter and fainter and fainter until it's dead silent. The exact same behavior actually comes out of point lights. Incidentally, though it's not sound, of course it's light. Now, let's take a look at just a couple of other common nodes that you're going to be using probably quite a bit. One of which is looping. 
And looping is just going to take any sound effect and play it over and over a set number of times. By default, it's set to loop indefinitely, which means forever. If you don't want it to play indefinitely, say you only want it to loop five times, you can set the loop count min and max to five on both sides. Or if you wanted a random range of loops, you could specify a min and a max that were different from one another. So if we plug this in and hit play. Seven, two, three, four. Six, five. And there we go. So it looped around and then it quit. All right. So there is a quick look at just a basic uh, sound sound cue. Now, nothing all that special. Really, this serves as more just an introduction to the interface as anything else. So what I'm going to do now is close this. Now, let's create an actually useful sound cue. So back over here in the sound demo package, let's clear out our filter. I'm going to right click and create a new sound cue which I'm going to call Spooky Wind Sound Cue. Now, of course, this is blank when it first comes in. So over here inside your content browser, we're going to look for a few specific sound effects. Now, as I'm going through this, if you're following along, feel free to switch things up. If you hear a sound effect that you'd rather use in place of something that I've got, hey, that's awesome. If you want to string your nodes together in a slightly different way for a different effect, that's great too. Be sh just have fun and really get in and play with this because the sound cue editor can really do some amazing things the more you play with it. So let's start off by picking on a specific sound. I'm going to click on all assets. And just to keep things simple, we're going to search for only sound wave data. And I want to look for air and wind. And there's a bunch of air wind sound effects. You can double click any of them and sample them. I'm going to pick specifically on air wind 04. With that selected, I will right click and place that into the sound cue editor. If we go ahead and just connect this in, we get. So it's kind of faint, but also kind of creepy. Now, we need this to loop, because right now it only plays once, and then it never plays again. So I'm going to right-click, come down to looping, and now we'll connect our air wind into a loop. And hit play. And it may be just a little bit on the faint side, so what I'm going to do is take our volume and kick it up just a little bit. Just so that you can hear that a little bit better. Now, let's go ahead and stop that. Now, to make this even spookier, what I'd like is to have a series of other sound effects that can randomly pay, play in the background. Now, I have some sound effects in mind. If you come into your content browser and search for the word murmur, there are a lot of different various murmur sound effects. There's like air murmurs and metal murmurs. And see, to me, that's just really creepy. So let's grab a few of these. I'm going to grab Murmur Squeak, if we scroll way down. I went too far. So Murmur Squeak 01. Let's grab Murmur Metal B05. Murmur Metal B07. I'm not going to sample all of them. We'll, we'll listen to them here in just a moment. And then Murmur Metal A03. So with all those selected, let's go back over to the sound cue editor, right click and place these in. Now I want to randomly jump between these, but let's play them all back real quick. Here's our squeak. And here's metal B05. B07. It's like somebody crawling around through ventilation ducts. And then metal A03. Okay, now what I want to do is randomly choose one of these sound effects to play it's at any given point. So we're going to create a random. And we'll add two more inputs to it by right clicking. Now let's get all these connected up. All right, now we have are two different types of sounds. We have one random sound effect, and we have our air loop, and we need to combine the two together. But how are we going to do that? 
but we're going to do that through a mixer. So let me slide these two characters back. Now, you just saw me grab two and move them. Of course, moving, very much like many of the other visual editors inside of UDK, just requires that you hold down Control and drag around. If you want to make a multiple selection, hold down Control and Alt, and you can drag out a marquee selection box. I'm going to Alt-click on this wire to break it. Let's right-click here and create a mixer. And we'll just wire these two sound effects together. Hit play. And we actually have a little bit of a problem in that, one, our loop cuts off. We're not playing that loop over and over. Two, we only get one of our sound effects and then that kind of ends the whole thing. Looping generally doesn't like it when you're playing something that doesn't loop along with it. So in short, what we have to have happen is that our random sound effect has to loop as well. So I'm going to hold down Control and Alt, grab all these nodes and slide them back as well. And let's create another looping node. And if we connect this into its own loop, this means that we're going to select one of these four sound effects over and over again. So let's try this out. And we're getting those sounds over and over which is great. The only problem is, to me, they're coming in with just a little bit too much frequency. So what I'm going to do is put a delay in here. So in between the looping and the random, I'm going to right-click, create a delay, and let's put a random delay. Let's say at any point between 3, not 5, but 3, and 8 seconds, we're going to pick one of these sound effects and play it back. So we just have to wire that in between and give this a try. And just to help you hear it, um, let me hit stop. Let me come over to my mixer. And I'm going to take the input on zero, which is the topmost input. And I'm going to turn that down to about 0.5. So now the air is actually going to be kind of quiet. And we'll be hearing primarily uh, just the random sound effects that are coming through. So there's one. Probably actually boost those up a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's just freaky. So we've got those looping over and over as well. Now, if we want a little more variety than just our four sound effects, we can also modulate those. So I'm going to grab my random and our four sound effects and slide those back. And in between the random and the delay, I'm going to right click and bring in a modulator. We'll connect our random to that and put the modulator into the delay. Now we'll do a pitch min and a pitch max of say 0.5 and actually 0.5 is a little high. Let's go with 0.7 and a pitch max of, oh, I don't know, 1.3. And we can also fluctuate the volume a little bit as well. So let's go with 0.8 and 1.2. Now, as we play, we're going, it's going to be a little hard to tell because these sound effects are all fairly organic. But what we're doing is each time one of these random sounds is chosen, we're changing its pitch. So that one was really low. We'll listen out for the next one. And there our squeak was toned down just a little bit as well. So it's a way that we can get some extra variety. So with all of this, we've now created a pretty spooky sound cue. So we're done. We can go ahead and close the sound cue editor. Let's go down to our sound demo package, and I'll clear out my filter. And our next step is going to be to save our package. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. When we come back, we'll take a look at how we can place this sound cue in our level for playback. That'll wrap this video up. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go.